Hello everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I move on to the first question, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up you can be notified about the same. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions which we are taking then you can join the telegram group, link is in the description below. All the free PDFs are provided on this very group. Now moving on to the first question that says identify the incorrect statement. So here we have few statements which relate to dumping and anti-dumping duty which is imposed to deal with such situations. So let's first discuss what why is anti-dumping duty recently in news, what is the case going on related to dumping and what do we actually mean by dumping. Okay, so recently, not only recently, in fact, during past many years, India has been imposing a lot of anti-dumping duty on China. China used to dump its products in India because of which India has to take this step. So what do we mean by this concept of dumping? See, at times this happens that China produces some good in bulk. Okay, they have a lot of production of that good and that is not getting sold in their own nation. So, in order to get rid of that excess production, what they do is that they dump such products in other countries like India. Dumping means selling off the product at a really very low value than its actual market value at which it is sold in the home market. So, if any product hai, wo se 80 rupees mein we will say 100 rupees may produce hua and with a 10 rupee margin it is being sold at 110 rupee in China. But China ne usko itna zada production kar di uski ki wo itna zada unke paas uska production available hai, wo product available hai but wo sell nahi ho raha. So China ne kya kiya? India mein wo product la ke dump kar diya, 80-80 rupees mein wo product sell karne lage. This is dumping. Uski fair value 100 hai. Lekin Come value pe usko wo kisi or country mein jake sell karte te hai so that they can get rid of that excess production. Why is it a problem for India? Isko ek uh, problematic situation ki tarah kyo treat kiya jata It's really good if you are getting a product at 80 rupees. But from an uh, economic point of view, if you see, it is going to affect the Indian manufacturers a lot. Similar kind of product which is being manufactured in India say at 100 rupees and being sold at 110. If this Chinese product, product comes to India and it gets sold at 80 rupees which is not a fair market value. Then no one is going to buy a costlier Indian product. Everyone will prefer rupee 80 product because of which the Indian man manufacturers are going to suffer a lot. So in order to compensate this situation a duty is imposed. So if the Chinese are doing such a kind of thing or if anyone is dumping their products in India, they are selling it at a value which is below the actual market value at which that is sold in their home market, then India adds some tariff to that. So if Chinese are dumping their product at rupees 80, India might impose a 30 rupee anti-dumping duty on that and same product will now be sold at 110 rupee. So in order to deal with the situation of dumping, the tariff which is imposed is the anti-dumping duty. I hope you have concept of this concept. When you sell the fair market value from the product in any country, you basically want to get rid of that product and you want to face other countries and that is dumping. And for that, the tax that you will impose on the other country, country aap impose karegi, that is anti-dumping duty. So a lot of cases have been there where India has imposed anti-dumping duties on China. Recently on some more products, five more Chinese products, these duties have been imposed. So who gives the recommendations related to that? It's the Directorate General of Trade Remedies. This is an institution that has been imposed the recommendations on duty. Talking a bit about this Directorate General of Trade Remedies. So it is a body which works under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And what it does, it administers all the trade remedial man, all the trade remedial measures. Like if some countervailing duties need to be imposed, if some anti-dumping duties need to be imposed, whatever safeguard measures need to be taken, which are trade related, everything is handled by the Directorate General of the Trade Remedies. Kisi or country may be agar aapke country ke jo producers hai, jo exporters hai, wo koi trade related investigations face kar rahe, koi problems face kar rahe. So this very 
body is going to help them. It provides the trade defense support to your domestic industry, to the exporters which are facing some kind of trade remedial investigations in other countries. All right. So which products are there on which these duties have been imposed recently? There are certain aluminium goods and certain chemicals on which this anti-dumping duty has been imposed. So kuch uh, flat rolled aluminium products hai. Then there are certain chemicals like sodium hydrosulfide which is used in dye industry, silicon sealant which is used in manufacturing your solar voltaic modules. Then there is thermal power and also used in thermal power applications. Then there are components used in refrigeration industry like hydrofluorocarbon, hydrofluorocarbon blends. So these uh, products are there on which the anti-dumping duty has been imposed. Dekha ja raha tha ki China in products ko India mein dump kar raha hai jis wajah se in pet duties imposed kar di gai taaki local manufacturers isse bat sake. So this duty has been imposed for a period of 5 years as of now and it is going to guard your local manufacturers from cheap imports from the neighboring country. So local manufacturers ko protect karne ke liye ek tarah se healthy competition ensure karne ke liye ye duty imposed ki gai hai. So the DGTR has concluded that these products were exported by China to India below at a value which is below the normal value which has resulted in dumping and it is causing injury to the domestic markets because of which this duty has been imposed. So the same concept of dumping has been discussed over here that it occurs when the goods are exported by a country to another country at price lower than the price it normally charges in its home country and it's a, it has a distortive effect as well. It's an unfair trade practice. That's why uh, as a protectionist measure, the tariff which is imposed is the anti-dumping duty. Okay, so the same thing we have discussed already. World Trade Organization has permitted the countries to ensure fair competition. They can uh, use these anti-dumping measures. So, if I WTO ke provisions ki baat karu, anti-dumping duty related. So, two provisions are there which I want to discuss. One is that this anti-dumping duty can be imposed for a period of five years unless and until it is revoked earlier. Then there is a sunset review. That means you can review if there is further a need to extend this measure or not. And if the need arises, then you can further extend this duty for a period of five years. And that is done through a sunset review. Sunset review kya hai? basically evaluate karna ki ye program uh, jo hai, iski further or isko execute karne ki zarurat hai ki nahi. So when you are investigating, when you are evaluating the entire thing, that whether you need this program further more or not, you are assessing how it has performed, how effective has been, is still there a need to continue with it? If yes, then you can on this review, you can continue it for a further period of five years. This is what WTO says. So that's all I which I wanted to discuss about the anti-dumping duty. Now coming back to the question. So we have to identify the incorrect statement. First one says dumping is said to occur when the goods are exported by a country to another country at a very high price than the price it normally charges in its own home market. No, at a very low price when you are selling, right? So this is incorrect. Second one says anti-dumping duty is a protectionist tariff uh, which is there to rectify the dumping situation. It is correct. Last one says anti-dumping duty is valid for five years unless revoked earlier as per WTO. It's also correct. Only first is incorrect. Answer is option A. Now moving on to the second question. It says markets regulator SEBI has restructured some of its advisory committees which pertain to the secondary market, to the mutual funds, to the corporate bonds and securitization and to the information systems. So who has been appointed as the chairperson of the mutual fund advisory committee or mutual fund uh, yeah, mutual fund advisory committee. So SEBI ne recently kuch apni advisory committees ko restructure kiya hai. Ye advisory committees unhe secondary markets, mutual funds, corporate bonds, securitization market, in sab ko develop karne ke liye advisors deti hai. So they are asking about who has been appointed as a chairperson of the mutual fund advisory committee. So let's discuss very briefly about each of these committees and their role and then we'll come back to the question. So we'll be discussing about four committees which have been restructured. One which relates to secondary market, second relates to mutual fund, third relates to corporate bond and securitization and the last one is related to the information system. So talking about the first which is secondary market advisory committee, yes 17 members ki committee, it's a committee of 17 members, you need not memorize each of the 17 members. Something which you must know is the 
who is is that who is the current chairperson so madhavi puri boj who is who was the ex whole time member of sebi has uh, who was the ex whole time member of sebi has been appointed as its chairperson and one more person an important person who has been added in the 17 member panel is the chief executive officer of zerodha nitin kamat is committee ka role kya hai as the name suggests it advises on the development of the secondary market so it advises sebi on how to develop the secondary market suggests the steps to improve its safety its efficiency its transparency so secondary market ke liye hum kya kya acha kar sakte hain isko aur effective banane ke liye wo sab ye committee advise karti hai moving on to the next committee which is the committee on the mutual funds so it's a committee of 24 members you need not memorize these 24 members who is the chairperson you must know the chairperson is usha thorat so this person was the former deputy governor of rbi who has been appointed as the committee's chairperson other than that uh, the franklin templetons sanjay sapre and kotak mahindra's md nilesh sah they nilesh sah shah are no more the part of this very committee then there are other persons who have been added to this committee like the md and ceo of navi asset management company of morning star india of uh, hindustan business line consultant editor r p krishnan so they are some people who have been added to this committee and these two sanjay sapre and nilesh shah have been removed from this very committee so what's the role of this committee as the name suggests it advises sebi on matters related to mutual funds so mutual fund industry ko kaise develop kiya jaye use aur kaise simplify kiya jaye aur transparent kaise banaya jaye all these measures are suggested by this committee to sebi then moving to the third committee corporate bonds and securitization advisory committee a committee of 23 members who is heading this committee g mahalingam the former whole time member of sebi what's the role of this committee so it deals in developing the corporate bond and the securitization market okay so there are various issues on which this it, it advises sebi related to matters on the corporate bond market and the market for the securities instruments in india it also suggests various steps on how to handle the risks which arise in these markets so operational risk hai systemic risks hai jo corporate bond market mein securitize instruments related un sub matters mein ye committee sebi ko advise karti hai then moving on to the last committee the information system security committee it's a five member committee the chairperson is professor professor h krishnamurthy who is the principal research scientist at iisc bangalore and what's the role of this committee to deal with cyber security okay so how we can uh, make cyber security policies more resilient what all can be done to deal with cyber security all recommendations suggestions are given by this committee to sebi so it's basically responsible to approve all the policies to make our cyber security system more stronger so this was all about the committees coming back to the question so who is the chairperson of the advisory committee on mutual funds as we have just discussed it's usha thorat answer is option b now moving on to the third question which says which of the following are factors behind the esg fund growth so let's see what do we mean by esg fund and then we'll answer this question so esg stands for environment social governance esg funds are like mutual funds with a slight difference okay so what we have seen is that the esg funds have grown a lot in india over the couple of years especially if we talk about asia then in asia india has a overwhelming demand and the growth of esg funds so what are esg funds see in case of a mutual fund the money of people is pooled and then it is invested in different assets in different instruments right so esg fund is also a mutual fund the money is pooled but instead of investing it in normally any company the money gets invested in those companies which are focusing on the environment which are more socially responsible so what's the usual uh, way of investing in any company when a mutual fund is to be invested anywhere some parameters are seen like what is the earning capacity of that company what is the quality of its management what are its cash flows how is its business so hum kuch financial parameters ko assess karke fir decide karte hain ki ye mutual fund ka paisa is company mein invest karna hai ki nahi 
but in case of esd funds this is a secondary criteria फाइनेंशियल पैरामीटर्स देखना सेकेंडरी क्राइटेरिया है प्राइमरी क्राइटेरिया है ये देखना कि वो कंपनी इन्वायरमेंट के लिए सोसाइटी के लिए क्या क्या कर रही है तो द प्राइमरी क्राइटेरिया फॉर ई एस टी फंड इज टू शॉर्टलिस्ट द कंपनीज बेस्ड ऑन हाउ गुड दे आर एट प्रोटेक्टिंग द इन्वायरमेंट डूइंग समथिंग फॉर द इन्वायरमेंट आर दे सोशली रिस्पॉन्सिबल हाउ गुड इज देयर गवर्नमेंट सो ऑल दीज फैक्टर्स आर सीन फर्स्ट देन द फाइनेंशियल पैरामीटर्स एंड देन इट इज डिसाइडेड वेयर टू इन्वेस्ट दिस फंड ओके so the key difference is the consigns which is involved in esg funds so they look for those companies which are more environment friendly which have more ethical practices and this one is also regulated by sebi now talking about the factors behind esg growth india mein hum is fund ki itni growth kyu dekh rahe hain companies invest kar rahe hain to uske kam kisi company mein investment aa rahi hai to esg parameters kyu check kiye ja rahe hain See, the policy focus has shifted a lot. Today, everyone pays more attention to the cleanliness, to the skill development, healthcare, education, and other such things which a company is doing. Especially, the investors are looking for such companies which are uh, doing environmentally good, social good. Okay. Also, the awareness of people have increased over time. They have more understanding about if. what is likely to be the impact of any business on the environment on the society at large moreover the traditional approach has changed and the modern investors today look into the impact which the businesses are doing on the environment in fact there are various legal requirements also csr requirements are there for the companies which they have to adhere to so all this has changed the present scenario we have done a lot of bad to the environment and now it's the time to pay off so hame environment ka dhyan mein rakh pay hue apna business karna if you are not doing that in long run you are going to suffer a lot that's the significance of esg funds when you are doing ethical practices you are having good governance you are doing good for society for the environment then you are likely to attract more investors you are likely to gain more um benefits out of that and if you are not paying attention then the companies which are paying attention will take away all your customers will take away all your investors and your revenues and profits will be impacted in long run agar aap aaj environment ko harm kar rahe ho future mein jaake jab problems hongi to aapka business acche se flourish nahi karega aapke jo customers hai jo investors hai wo bakiyon ke taraf chale jayenge baki companies ki taraf jo in sab cheezon pe focus karti hai so that's the significance all right now one more thing which i want to discuss here regarding esg funds is that there is a major concern going on related to this and that concern is green washing green washing is that when you are not doing anything good for the environment anything good for the society but you are have you are uh, claiming it in a wrong way that you are actually doing that so green washing is basically unsubstantiated claim with through which you are trying to deceive the customers to believe that you are actually the uh, offering the products which are environment friendly so aap jab jhoota claim karke logo ko ye dikha rahe ho ki aap environment friendly products bana rahe ho aap society ke liye kuch kar rahe ho you are deceiving them when you are actually not doing such things that is green washing okay it's a major concern related to this now what type of parameters do usually the esg funds look out for before investing they see what is the greenhouse gas and carbon emissions which you are doing how much employment you are generating and many such parameters are there so if i talk about companies which have high carbon outputs agar aap tobacco company ki baat karo coal miners oil gas companies ye companies environment ko harm deti hain and that's the reason why such companies are not usually included in the esg fund portfolio jahan esg fund invest karega unme ye companies nahi aati बट वो कंपनीज आती हैं जो एक्चुअली इन्वायरमेंट को बेनिफिट करेंगी लाइक एडवांस वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स इंप्रूव्ड टेक्नोलॉजी रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी हेल्थ केयर एंड ऑल सच एरिया दे आर पार्ट ऑफ द ईएसटी फंड पोर्टफोलियो नाउ कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन व्हिच ऑफ दीज आर द फैक्टर्स बिहाइंड द ईएसटी फंड ग्रोथ सो ग्रेटर फोकस ऑन द सोशल डेवलपमेंट एंड एनवायरमेंट फैक्टर्स सेक्टर्स इज इंक्रीजिंग अवेयरनेस इज आल्सो अ फैक्टर ग्रीन वॉशिंग इज नॉट अ फैक्टर इट्स अ कंसर्न so first and second are factors answer is option c now coming to the last question it says who has been appointed by rbi as the additional director on the board of rbl bank for 2 years and under the section 36 ab of banking regulation act which gives the power to rbi that it can appoint a person on the board uh, in order to ensure 
the support in the regulatory and the supervisory matters. So recently, a lot of speculation is going on related to the RBL Bank. There have been new appointments to this bank. There have been some uh, removal of the people from the board of, of the bank. Then something happened because of which the prices of the RBL's stock suddenly went down. Okay, so we have seen a lot of speculation going on related to RBL Bank that its financial health is not good. Ye kaha ja raha tha, bohat zada ye news mein a gaya tha ki RBL Bank ki financial situation achi nahi hai. RBI ne specially alag se director yaha appoint kiya hai. Kuch problem hai, kuch fishy hai is bank ke saath. Ho sakta hai ye bank fail hone wala ho. Ho sakta hai ye enough capital nahi maintain kar raha. Ho sakta hai iski financial problem. पैरामीटर्स अच्छे नहीं हैं, सो इस वजह से लोगों ने इसके स्टॉक में जिन्होंने इन्वेस्ट किया हुआ था अचानक से उन्होंने अपने इन्वेस्टमेंट्स विड्रॉ किए एंड वी सो अ मेजर फॉल इन द प्राइस ऑफ दिस वेरी बैंक्स स्टॉक, सो व्हाट इस एक्चुअल पोजीशन ऑफ दिस बैंक एंड व्हाई एंड हु हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज अ additional director on this bank let's discuss all of that and clear all these speculations so जो ये स्पेक्यूलेशन हुई कि बैंक के फाइनेंशियल मैटर्स में कोई प्रॉब्लम है दैट हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ सर्टन इवेंट्स सराउंडिंग द बैंक कुछ ऐसे इवेंट्स हुए जिस वजह से लोगों ने ऐसा सोचना शुरू कर दिया एंड बिकॉज ऑफ विच वी सॉ ट्वेंटी थ्री परसेंट टिप ऑन मंडे आफ्टर अ वीक एंड डिसीजन वॉज टेकन टू ब्रिंग अ न्यू मेंबर टू द स्पोर्ट सो यू कैन सी द प्राइज वॉज अराउंड वन सेवेंटी टू एंड इट सडनली ड्रॉप्ड to a very low value okay although it started stabilizing back but we saw a major dip what happened suddenly what actually happened which led to the speculations that the bank's health financial health is not good so kya aise events hue jis wajah se logon ne aisa sochna shuru kar diya wo pehle dekh lete hain so the bank had vishwa veer ahuja as its md and ceo so this person has immediately went on a leave he took the leave as a uh, md and ceo of the bank and rajiv ahuja who was currently working as the executive director in this very bank he has been appointed as the interim md and ceo so this already md jo tha unhone leave le li jo unke executive director the unko interim manager bana diya gaya iske alawa rbi ne ek person ko additional director ki tarah appoint kiya bank ke RBI appointed Yogesh K Dayal the chief manager of Reserve Bank of India as the additional director of the board for 2 years and such a decision is usually not taken by RBI RBI rose hi kisi ko appoint nahi kar deta kisi private bank ke board mein so this step was quite surprising and people started thinking that there is something going wrong with the bank that's the reason why additional director of R- from RBI has been appointed over here the financial health of the bank might not be that good so finally rbi came up with a notification which cleared all these speculation rbi has allayed all the concerns going on related to the financial health of rbl so rbi ne kya kaha hai rbi ne kaha hai ki jo ye rbl bank hai it is well capitalized and it is having good financial position it's having a satisfactory financial position so there is no need to worry बैंक की पोजीशन अच्छी खासी है आप लोग ऐसे ही डर रहे थे आरबीआई ने प्रॉपरली इस बात को क्लियर कर दिया है आरबीआई हैज आल्सो शेयर्ड द सम ऑफ द डेटा व्हिच शोस दैट द बैंक्स पोजीशन इज गुड इनफ सो द कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो बीइंग मेंटेनड बाय द बैंक इज 16.33 प्रोविजन कवरेज रेशियो 76.3 लिक्विडिटी कवरेज रेशियो व्हिच इज यूजुअली 100% इट इज आल्सो being maintained at a higher level 153% so there is no need to worry all the financials of the bank are good enough they are satisfactory coming to the appointment of an additional director so rbi ne achanak se additional director kyu appoint kiya kya rbi ke paas ye power thi ki unhone private bank ke board mein ek person ko appoint kiya hai see section 36 ab of banking regulation act says that rbi can appoint additional director in the private banks when it feels that the board of that banks need more support uh, as far as the you know, regulatory measures are concerned as far as supervisory matters are concerned so supervisory or regulatory matters ko aur support acha mile is wajah se additional director rbi appoint kar sakta hai kisi bhi private bank mein aur isiliye rbi ne rbl bank mein bhi appoint kiya so there is no such issue as far as the financial health of the business is concerned so the speculations were actually wrong the financial health of the banks remained stable 
ऑल दो दीज स्पेक्यूलेशन हैव नाउ बीन क्लियर्ड बाई आर बी आई आर बी आई ने क्लियरली ये सारा डेटा एक नोटिफिकेशन के थ्रू अपनी वेबसाइट के थ्रू लोगों को बता दिया है सो दे इज नो इशू गोइंग ऑन विद आर बी एल बैंक नाउ कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन हु हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज एडिशनल डायरेक्टर बाई आर बी आई इन दिस वेरी बैंक दी आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी योगेश के दयाल This was all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.